Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video. Today we'll be talking about AFib again, and this time around is about the treatment. Here is a scenario where a man walks to the doctor and tells him that this side is accelerating too fast and need to apply brake. How can we help him to stop it? The first thing to determine is whether or not this patient is stable or unstable. How do we know that this patient is unstable? Is it confused? Is he having chest pain? Is he having discomfort at the chest region? Feeling pressure there? The vital sign is already taken. Any hypotension? Is he feeling dizzy or lethargic? Then are there features of heart failure, like utopnea, dyspnea, shortness of breath, paroxysmal, notional dyspnea, edema? You know. Once we are able to determine that, then the next thing is cardioversion immediately. But if this patient is stable and the onset is just between 1 to 2 days or 24 to 48 hours, anticoagulation is not necessary before you cardiovert. Do all your investigations and give maintenance therapy if the patient is stable and is within 48 hours. This patient is stable, but onset is greater than 48 hours. Oh, then something will have to change. We have to give her the coagulant for three good weeks first. Then, cardiovert after that. Continue other medications. Give your anticoagulant again. Zareto or warfarin could be used for anticoagulation. And you can give the aspirin if the patient is less than 65 years old and there is no child score. The child score is what we use to determine the risk of stroke here. Yeah. And let me quickly go over that. The first thing to consider there is C, which is congestive heart failure. If that is present, that is one mark. Is hypertension present in this patient? Is he or she older than 75 years? Any diagnosis of diabetes mellitus here? And any history of stroke? or transcends ischemic attack before. If that is present, that will be two marks. So if none of these is present, which is zero over six, that means the person has low risk of coming down with stroke. If it is about one over six, that is uh, low to moderate. And if it is two to three over six, that is moderate. And anything greater than that is high risk for stroke. And if we're able to pick that in, anticoagulant right away. If our failure is present, we will use digocin or amildarone. You can use beta blockers or you use one of the cousin channel blockers called non dihydropyridine cousin channel blocker. An example here is ditazem. If you're not winning with beta blockers or cousin channel blockers, you can add a low dose of digocene. However, digocene and potassium compete for bad inside. So watch out for the level of electrolyte and specifically potassium. Because if for any reason there is uh, 
competition between the two of them, there can be toxicity of the jealousy. Cultivation is necessary even if stable, and even if less than 48 hours, if there is structural heart defect, like valvular heart disease or cardiomyopathy, you cultivate. In any permanent atrial fibrillation, but less symptomatic, use beta blocker for nitroglycerin. An acute treatment, we can use anti rhythmic drops like amiodarone if you do echo and left ventricular ejection fraction is low or there is myocardial infarction, you know, indicating there is left ventricular dysfunction. Beta focus will be good. If there is concomitant myocardial infarction in the same patient, propafenone and flecainine are appropriate. What are the investigations to be done here? EKG. As a matter of fact, how are you going to be sure this is a fib, it's not a flother without EKG? So EKG, thyroid stimulating hormone to know if we are dealing with hypothyroidism here. Echo, transthoracic and transosophagia. See the wall motion and the valves. And determine if thrombus formation is already ongoing and be able to predict the possibility of stroke in these patients very soon or remote. Child x ray, what is going on? Even from the child x ray, you can see massive cardiac silhouette. That might be the beginning of another diagnosis in time. Glucose with Gone through the other time, the possible differential is hypoglycemia. So let's do the glucose here and know if this patient is non hypoglycemic. Complete blood count to rule out anemia. Pregnancy test. Pregnancy state is an hypodynamic state. Electrolytes. We are given a lot of medications. You just saying, you want to know. What is going on and how the kidney is functioning? Toxicology so screening, stretch drops, can mimic a fibrillation, can trigger it, can worsen it. Vanilla mandelic acid to rule out for chromocytoma, lipid profile, and of course liver function, because the name metabolism of on the medications you are taking. So thank you for watching my videos. We'll soon meet again. Please remember to subscribe to my channel so that you can be getting these videos immediately they are uploaded. Thank you. I appreciate it.